morning, my dear friends. Today is the second Sunday before Easter, and theme for this Sunday is the wisdom and power of God are most clearly revealed in the weakness and foolishness of the cross. Let's pray. First Corinthians one eighteen says, "The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God." Heavenly Father. Praise you for this uh, Sunday and your purpose for it. We know that when we gather together, you always have a divine agenda. We love you for that, Father, that even when we have done what you have asked, the results are so much greater than we ever could have imagined. Even in failed attempts, you blow us away with your faithfulness to provide that we need. Our prayers today is that your will be done through this church service. Take what we have prepared and multiply our, effort, our efforts as only you can. Steer our intentions to align with your righteousness. Righteousness will remind us of your faithful provision when our efforts fail us or fall short. May all glory go up to you when we reach the finish line and climb over benchmarks. Blanket us with your peace today through this church service. Father, keep us physically safe and guard our hearts and minds from pride and selfishness. Keep love at the forefront of our minds today and the guide, guiding light for all we set out to accomplish and celebrate. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus suffered and died to 
Almighty and everlasting God, in your tender love towards the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and may share in his glorious resurrection. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever. Amen. We shall pray for the day they will observe uh, of the Blessed Virgin Mary on 25th March. O Almighty God, who endued the Blessed Virgin Mary with singular grace and called her to be the mother of our Lord, give us a willing heart like hers that we may hear your word and keep it through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever. Amen. Let's pray for the spread of the gospel. O God, you have made of one blood all the nations that dwell on the face of the earth, and sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to preach peace to the whole world. Grant that the people of this and every land may seek for you and find you, and hasten, O Heavenly Father, the fulfillment of your promise to pour out your Spirit all upon all flesh, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever. Amen. Now this time we shall follow the intercessory prayer, come a special prayer in the midst of the spread of COVID-19. Let's pray. O God, our healer, show your compassion for the whole human family that is in turmoil and burden with illness and with fear, hear our cry, O Lord, listen to our prayer. Come to our aid as the coronavirus spreads globally. Heal those who are sick, support and protect their families and friends from being infected. Hear our cry, O Lord, listen to our prayer. Grant us your spirit to love and self-discipline so that we may come together, working to control and eliminate the coronavirus, hear our cry, O God, listen to our prayer. Make us vigilant, attentive, and pro proactive in the eradication of all diseases, malaria, dengue, HIV, and AIDS, and other uh, that uh, create suffering and often result in death for many people. Hear our cry, O God, listen to our prayer. Heal our self-centeredness and indifference that makes us worry only when the virus uh, threatens us, open ways beyond uh, timidity and fear that too easily ignore our neighbor. Hear our cry, O God, listen to our prayer. Strengthen and encourage those in public health services and in the medical process, uh, profession caregivers, nurses, attendants, doctors, all who commit themselves to caring for the sick and their families. Hear, o, hear our cry, O God, listen to our prayer. Inspire, give insight and hope to all researchers focused on developing a vaccine. Hear our cry, O God, listen to our prayer. Sustain all workers and business owners who suffer loss 
of livelihood due to shutdowns, quarantines, uh, closed borders, and other restrictions protect and guard all those who must travel. Hear our cry, O God, listen to our prayer. Guide the leaders of the nations that they speak the truth, halt the spread of misinformation, and act with justice so that all your family may know healing. Hear our cry, O God, listen to our prayer. Heal our world, heal our bodies, strengthen our hearts and our minds, and in the midst of turmoil, give us hope and peace. Hear our cry, O God, listen to our prayer. Hold in your gentle embrace all who have died and all who will die this day. Comfort their loved ones in their despair. Hear our cry, O God, listen to our prayer. Remember all your family, the entire human race, and all your creation in your love. Amen. Confession of Sin Beloved, our Lord Jesus Christ said, The Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved by God's grace to keep his commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Let's pray to Gandhali. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against one another in thought and word and deed. In the evil we have done and in the good we have not done through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that, that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who forgive one another and truly repent of their sins, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Today's first reading has been taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verses beginning from 24th verse. Isaiah 44, beginning from the 24th verse. Here we can find that the Lord's way of redeeming his people is totally contrary to what wise men expect of him. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who made all things, who stretched out the heavens alone, who has spread out the earth, who was with me, who frustrates the omens of liars and makes fools of diviners, who turns wise men back and makes their knowledge foolish, who confirms the word of his servants and performs the counsel of his uh, messengers, who says of Jerusalem, she shall be inhabited, and of the cities of Judas, they shall be built, and I will raise up their ruins, who says to the deep, be dry, I will dry up your rivers, who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he shall fulfill all my purpose, saying of Jerusalem, she shall be built, and of the temple your foundation shall be laid. This is the word of the God. Thanks be the Lord. Today's second reading has been taken from the first epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians, first chapter and beginning from the 18th verse. First Corinthians, first chapter, beginning from the 18th verse. Here we can find that uh, Paul says that God's wisdom and power is revealed in the cross of Christ. Though of Jews it is a, a stumbling block 
and to Greek foolishness. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the cleverness of the clever I will, I will thaw. Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made full as the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greek seeks wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles, but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and weakness of God is stronger than men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.
Holy Gospel, Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 12, and beginning from the first verse. Glory to you, Christ Jesus. Mark, chapter 12, and beginning from the first verse. Here we can find that in the parable of the wicked tenants, Christ foretells his own death at the hands of the Jewish leaders. Jesus began to speak to the Jews in parables, a man planted a vineyard and set a haze around it and dug a pit for the winepress and built a tower and let it out of tenants and went into another country. When the time came, he sent a servant to the tenants and get from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. And they took him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Again he sent to them another servant and they wounded him in the head and treated him shamefully. And he sent another, and him they killed. And so with many other, some they beat and some they killed. He had still one other, a beloved son. Finally he sent him to them, saying, They will respect my son. But those tenants say to one another, This is the here, come let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. And they took him and killed him, and cast him out of the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants, and give the vineyards to others. Have you not read this scripture? The very stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they tried to arrest him, but uh, feared the multitudes, for they perceived that he had told the parable against them. So they left him and went away. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Good morning and greetings to you all in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we are meditating upon Lord's Prayer, this morning we will look into the fifth and sixth sentence of this prayer. This prayer starts with worship and ends with worship. And each sentence is a topic of prayer. And they are in a sequence, they are in, a, in an order. And last Sunday we looked into the fourth sentence that is Father give us this day our daily bread. And uh, immediately after this sentence the next, the fifth index prayer comes forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those, those who have sinned against us. And the topic is confession and forgiveness. So before we go into this meditation, shall we pray? Precious Heavenly Father, thank you Lord for giving us this wonderful opportunity to gather in your name and worship you. Father, as we are meditating upon the prayer which you taught us, which we call as Lord's Prayer, and today we want to look into the fifth and sixth sentence of this prayer. And as we meditate, open our hearts and minds and our thoughts. And through God, Holy Spirit, speak and teach each one of us. For your name and glory, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. 
and the topic is confession and forgiveness as you know that the first three index sentences of this prayer are directed towards god and from fourth sentence the petitions starts the 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 prayers are directed towards the petitioner the one who is praying the one who is worshiping and one who is pleading and fourth sentence last sunday we looked was give us this day our daily bread and immediately after this sentence the fifth index sentence comes as forgive us our sins as we have forgiven them those who have sinned against us now this fifth index prayer is a very crucial and critical for our relationship with our god because the kingdom of god is all about dealing with sin and finding forgiveness so the question which comes to my mind is that why this if this is so crucial why this confession and forgiveness why this index prayer didn't come beforehand much earlier if it was about our relationship with god then why didn't it come immediately i start the prayer with confession and forgiveness and uh, when look into it when we if we start this prayer with confession the focus is on self not on god and if you look into this sequence sequence of this prayer first sentence to third sentence they are actually making us humble making us realize to whom we are coming to pray and who god is and what are our authorities you know like if we have to write a letter to the managing director of tata steel we have to first address who he is and what all authorities are with him and then slowly we will build up the letter and come to the petition which we want to put it in the same way when we come to god first we need to understand who god is to whom we are worshiping to whom we are praying and what are all authorities are so the focus is on god first and that makes us realize makes us humble and we bow down before him to worship and we plead give us this day our daily bread and the moment when we plead this and this prayer leads us to confession because i am coming to most holy god and when i ask for bread when i ask for his blessings there are some things which hinder between god and us between god and me and that is my own sense now all these things have to be dealt first in order to receive the bread in order to receive the blessings from god therefore how wonderfully lord takes us in a worshiping god making us realizing who god is making us humble and then asking for bread and then when you asking for bread you need to ask for confession you need to ask for forgiveness because you're coming to the most holy god who cannot stand a single stain of sin 
So I'd like to share three things on this topic. Number one is confession and forgiveness. Forgive us our sins. Now here comes a question in my mind. Can a child of God experience God's blessings while he ignores God's will, while he ignores God's commandments, while he ignores God's instructions, while he is, while he is harboring sin in his heart, in his life, can he still receive blessings from God? Let us look into the word of God. Psalm 66 verse 18 says, If I regard wickedness in my heart, the Lord will not hear. So this verse says that if I am harboring sin in my heart, the Lord will not hear my prayers. And Proverbs chapter 3, we use this verse very much. And uh, I would like to share with that with, with that verse Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 says trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding verse 6 says in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight we know this verse by heart very well but look at the context in which these verses have come go to Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 you read from one and from there it is connected it says my son do not forget forget my teaching but keep my commands in your heart for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity let love and faithfulness never leave you bind them around your neck write them in the tablet of your heart then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of god and man Trust in the Lord with all your heart. What is this heart? What is this heart all about? This heart is there, which has kept all God's command. This heart is where I have written all the commandments as a tablet. This heart is where this heart is not forgetting His teachings. This heart is keeping all the commandments. This heart is where all His scriptures words have been written and therefore it goes on to say trust in the lord with all your heart where all the scriptures and all the commandments are there and lean not in your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and then make your path straight this is the context so if i am not obeying his commands if i am forgetting his teachings i am not keeping if i am not writing his scriptures in my in the tablet of my heart then i will be misled and therefore proverbs 28 verse 9 says if anyone turns a deaf ear to the law even his prayers are detestable in other verses, it says that if anyone turns a deaf ear to the law, even his prayers are abominable, detestable. God will God will not hear his prayers. It's it's very untesty, abominable, detestable to God. Even if he is praying, those prayers are detestable to God because. The person who is praying is harboring sin in his heart. God cannot overlook sin. Sin becomes a barrier between God and us and it separates us. Therefore, it is very important for us to confess our sins and ask for forgiveness. Often we pray but we don't receive answers. We need to look into your own hearts. Is there any sin we need to confess? My second question is, if all my sins were forgiven on the cross of Calvary, why do I need to confess them again? 
Hebrews 10, 10 says, Jesus died for my sins once for all. Jesus has died for my sins, for sins of my past, my present and future. Then why do I have to confess again and again? The wonderful and the best answer the scripture gives in 1 John chapter 1 verses 7 to 9 it says but if you walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all sin please note again but if you walk in the light as he is in the light you are following Jesus Christ we have fellowship with one another so what is this fellowship what is the result of this fellowship? The result of this fellowship is that the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. And verse 8 says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins to one another and to God, He is faithful and just and He will forgive us our sins and purify us from all sin unrighteousness the blood of Jesus which was shed on the cross of Calvary is still there still flowing and according to this verse is saying that his his blood of his blood not blood of Jesus purifies us from all sin that means it is it is uh, present continuous tense that it continues to purify us and when we confess he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness and where is this happening when we have fellowship with one another and therefore James chapter 5 verse 16 says therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed the prayer of righteous man is powerful and effective who is the righteous man who has been who has been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ therefore confess your sins to each other and if you relate with this 1 John chapter 1 you know what is this fellowship when we walk in the light we have fellowship with one another and what we are doing we are confessing our sins to each other and we are praying for each other and then what will happen the blood of Jesus his son purifies it keeps on purifying us from all our sins so it's once for all means it is there therefore although the sin was paid in full by Christ but sin unconfessed and unforsaken puts a barrier between God and us. It's like you know the blood of Jesus Christ is flowing to us, and when I don't conf when I don't confess, and when I don't forsake, it's like I am stopping that blood of Jesus Christ. And when you go to hospital, you know the blood transfusion happens, and something like that is happening every day. The blood of Jesus Christ is purifying us and when we don't confess we stop that blood and we stop that work of purification of the cross the provision of purification is there and we because we don't confess we are we are not availing that provision that blood which purifies us Therefore, health, healing, forgiveness, confession, obedience, they are all interconnected. Don't confess if we uh, harbor sin. If we don't confess, that may also lead us to sickness. The, and confession leads to purification and which leads to healing. Therefore, James 5.16 wonderfully writes that James is very clear. Therefore, confess 
your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. Therefore, Lord Jesus Christ taught us this, forgive us our sins that we may be healed. Point number two. Number one was confession and forgiveness. Number two, condition of forgiveness. It says, forgive us our sins as we have also forgiven those who have sinned against us. As we have also forgiven those who have sinned against us. Many books have been written on forgiveness. So many books. And we have so many sermons and preaching on forgiveness. And Bible is Bible stresses us, scripture stresses, stresses us to forgive and forgiveness. Why? Because forgiving others is very difficult. We find it very difficult to forgive others. Nevertheless, word of God is very clear and it stands very clearly. Matthew chapter 6, when Lord Jesus Christ teaching about the Lord's Prayer. And immediately, verse 13, he says, Lead us not in temptations, but deliver us from evil. And verse 14 says, For if you forgive men, when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Please note the word, but. You know, but the hinge is there. For if you forgive men, when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. Therefore, Paul in his letters in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 31 and 32, he says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Get rid of all these things. Get rid of bitterness. Get rid of anger. Get rid of brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. How? Just as in Christ. God forgive you. Therefore, we have to forgive unconditionally, without any condition. That's the command of forgive. Forgive each other. And in this prayer, in this index prayer, this is the sentence where the condition is also there. Forgive us our sins. How? Which way? As we have also forgiven those who have sinned against us. Colossians chapter 3. Verses 12 and 13, it says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And what we were supposed to do in Ephesians, what he had, uh, Paul had written, that you have to get rid of everything, all the malice, anger, and what we have to do, and here in Colossian says that clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other. Bear with each other. In Hindi it says, Ek dusre ko sahalo. There's something we have to bear because everything is not alright. But we have to bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And Ephesians we learn, forgive as to Christ God forgave you. 
Therefore, we ought to forgive without any condition. The question now is, how often and how many times I must forgive others? That person keeps on sinning against me. And how long and how many times have I to sin? I have to forgive. In Hindi, I can say like, "Arey, kitna baar usko mai chhama karu? Baar baar mere saath wo aisa karta hai. Kitna baar mai chhama karu? How many times should I forgive?" And here is a wonderful conversation between Peter and Jesus, Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 and 22. Peter asks. You know, he, he Peter then Peter, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sin against me up to seven times? You know, seven times for them was a big thing. In verse 22, Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. So that is not 490 times. If you look very clearly, it is actually 77 times 7. You multiply, keep on multiplying. You know, Satar Guna Satar, Sad Guna Satar Ka Satar, you know, 70 into 7, then again in 7, and then multiply by 7, it keeps on going. Infinite times you have to forgive. It's not 490 times, but infinite times. Here, Lord Jesus Christ is teaching that I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. You know, actually, it is 77 times 7. And therefore, he says, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like the king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And he goes on to, uh, to get to uh, give the parable about the unmerciful servant you know the king forgive him ah, how much how much he was forgiven a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him and there the servant begged ah, and the servant's master took pity on him and cancelled the debt and let him go here how much amount 10,000 talents that is uh, roughly around one thousand dollars hundred thousand dollars not one thousand dollars is hundred thousand dollars that much amount was forgiven and what this servant did it says but when that servant went out he found out one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred dinari that is equal to only ten dollars and to him he grabbed him began to choke him pay back what you owe me he demanded now immediately he was forgiven by his master how much hundred thousand dollars and he came out and one of his fellow servant he owed him ten dollars and he grabbed him dragged him into the jail and you know and then finally what happened when the master came to know about this he called him the master called the servant and said you wicked servant i cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me shouldn't you have also had mercy on your fellow servant just as i had on you in anger his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed and verse 35 says this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart the master forgive hundred thousand dollars but this person could not forgive ten dollars and because he could not forgive just ten dollars the account of hundred thousand dollars was on and he was punished now another question 
we have to forgive we have to forgive everyone we are unconditionally is there any other way around forgiveness i mean the person has hurt me i don't want to forgive him is there any way around that i don't forgive and go away i mean it says no word of god says no you have to forgive verse 35 this is how your heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart there's no other way there's no around forgiveness but another question comes now then what i mean that person who has hurted me so badly he will go away so easily that lady insulted me so much she'll go away so easily that person who has not paid that amount he owes me he will he will go away so easily the, the people who have sinned against me so badly against me and my family they will go away so easily yes it is difficult but what the word of god says romans chapter 12 verse 19 he says do not take revenge my friends but leave room or room for god's wrath for it is written it is mine to avenge i will repay says the lord it's not that they are left out god will punish them god will definitely pour his wrath on them who have sinned against you but what we have to do do not take revenge forgive our duty is to forgive our duty is not to take revenge taking revenge and making judgments it is not our department it is god's department instead of pointing our fingers at each other let us forgive judgment belongs to god alone justice belongs to god alone revenge belongs to god alone nobody will be left out if i'm thinking that people are getting away freely no god will judge and nobody god is watching over everything and so when we when we forgive actually we are showing our faith and obedience to god alone we are obeying his commands we are actually obeying god we are actually showing our faith and obedience to god when we forgive others it is between that's why i said it is very crucial and critical for our relationship between god and us our sins against god is much much greater than the person the people who have sinned against us it's again like you know like one thousand dollar versus ten dollar the sins which we have committed against god is so great compared to the sins people or persons who have done against us therefore we need to forgive point number three number one was confession and forgiveness number two condition of forgiveness number three this leads us he says lord jesus Christ teaches us forgive us our sins this is a corporate community confession and forgiveness jesus included in this prayer always he was included us our our father give us this day forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us jesus included the plural word us is also a topic of corporate a community confession and forgiveness you have heard of word revival and here the key is confession forgiveness confessing each other and forgiving each other In daniel chapter 9 if you read verses 1 to 22 you know it's wonderful prayer you should 
meditate on this prayer Daniel chapter 9 verses if you read entire uh, uh, verses 1 to 22 wonderful prayer of confession you know I Daniel understood from the scriptures where did he understood from the scriptures that according to the word of Lord uh, word of the Lord given to Jerusalem Jeremiah the prophet the dissolution of Jerusalem would last 70 years and from the scriptures he has come to know that how how the how, how God's wrath would be coming on Jerusalem and therefore he goes down into fasting and in sackcloth and ashes and he prays to God and this is a, a community confession of of, of, of uh, confession and forgiveness he says we do not make request of you because we are righteous but because of your great mercy do not delay because your city and your people bear your name community confession and Ezra chapter 9 you know, actually Daniel will first written in chronological order if you see Daniel was written first and then comes Ezra Daniel wrote he said this prayer in Babylon and Ezra he is praying this with the remnant of Israelites who have who have come back uh, to build the temple and here the confession uh, chapter 9 verses you know verses 1 to uh, a whole chapter if you read the prayer of confession by Ezra it's oh God I am too ashamed and disgraced to lift up my face to you my God because our sins our heads our guilt our our, our kings our our priests they have all committed sin our God grant us your mercy our God be gracious and then verse 13 what happened to us as is a result of our evil deeds our evil guilt yet our God you have punished us less than our sins has deserved and have, have deserved and have given us a revenant like this and when Ezra is praying this confession and asking for forgiveness verse 10 chapter 10 Ezra chapter 10 verse 1 onwards says that while Ezra was praying and confessing weeping and throwing himself down before the house of God a large crowd of Israelites men women and children gathered around him they too wept bitterly and later on when you read the entire chapter there was a great revival in church if you want the revival the key is confess your sins to each other and forgive each other and pray for each other that's what James chapter 5 verse 16 says confess your sins to each other forgive each other and pray for each other so that there will be healing in the church and I conclude this in Old Testament they said our father forgive uh, our God forgive us and today we can say our father forgive us how wonderful this relationship we have with our God and here I conclude my fifth index prayer and I go into the sixth index prayer and that's another wonderful prayer you know lead us not into temptations but deliver us from evil in very brief and very short I'll just give you few key points so that you can also meditate fifth was father forgive us our sins as we have also forgiven them those who have sinned against us and six sentences lead us not in temptations but deliver us from evil the topic is watchfulness and deliverance this is a prayer of watchfulness and deliverance and here also Jesus is using the word us, the uh, plural word, lead us not to temptations, whole community and deliver us from evil, the whole community. You know, when we believed in Lord Jesus Christ, by believing in Lord Jesus Christ, 
We have all become children of God. We have all become the community of God. And Ephesians says, through Jesus Christ, by believing in Jesus Christ, we are all church. And what is church? The body of Christ. And therefore, in this body of Christ, proper functioning of each and every member of this body is very important for the health of the body. Each and every member of the body, they have to be function, they have to function very carefully and function well. So what will happen? If I, being the member of this body, if I choose to sin, and if I chose to disobey, and if I harbor a hidden sin, nobody is knowing about my sin which is there inside me. My disobedience will not only affect me, but will affect the entire body. And we know from this our physical body, if even a very small insignificant part of a body, if, if there's some disease, the whole body is in pain. In the same manner, if I harbor a hidden sin, it will not only affect me, but it will affect the entire church, the body of Christ. And our enemy, Satan, loves to deceive and he keeps on moving like a roaring lion to tear apart anyone so that the whole church is destroyed. Therefore, this prayer, lead us not to temptations, but deliver us from evil, is a prayer of vigilance. This is a, a prayer of a God who is on duty. Actually, we are making this commitment that we'll be praying and we'll be alert. And I will share two points and I'll end my sermon today's sermon. First thing is, lead us not to temptation. The question is, does God tempt us? Does God lead us into temptation? The word temptation, the Greek word is actually, the Greek word is parasmos, which has got three meanings. Number one is trials. Number two, testing. Number three, temptation. So this parasmos, this temptation, this parasmos word has to be looked into the context of the passage and the verse and the book. James chapter 1 verses uh, 2, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brother, whenever you, have, you, you, you face trials, here word is parasmos, when you face trials of many kinds. And then in verse uh, 12, he says, blessed is, blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Here again, the word is parosmos, because when he has stood the test, he will receive crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And so the context is about trial and testing because of the gospel. And here James is encouraging the reader to rejoice because of this parosmos because of this trials and testing and other context immediately in verse 13 he says when tempted mark this here again the word is parasmos when tempted no one should say god is tempting me for god cannot be tempted by evil nor does he tempt anyone the verse bible is very clear God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. That means he never leads, he, ne he never leads anyone to temptation. But how this temptation comes? But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he has dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin when it is full gives birth to death. So how this sentence has come, I mean, how this has been interpreted or translated, lead us on temptation. Actually, lead means 
to guide and therefore Lord Jesus Christ is actually praying his teaching to pray Lord do not allow us to fall in temptation or lead us away from temptation guide us away from temptation and therefore Matthew chapter 26 verse 41 he, he said in, in the garden of Gethsemane to, to his uh, uh, disciples Peter, James and John especially to Peter keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation keep watching and praying be alert keep watching and praying why so that you may not enter into temptation he was telling to Peter and what happened did Peter uh, uh, was alert no he slept off and the result of his sleeping of not being alert of not being awake of not being uh, you know praying he denied Jesus Christ three times Jesus had warned him that Satan has asked for you but here Peter slept off and then he denied Jesus Christ three times therefore this prayer lead us not temptation is basically a prayer of vigil prayer of alert prayer of watchfulness that we are making this commitment that will keep on praying so that will not enter into temptation and then number two comes but delivers deliver us from evil now we're praying that first thing is the the first part of this prayer is lead us not temptation is lead us away from temptation lord do not allow us to fall into temptation second part is even if i fall into temptation lord deliver us we are praying lord rescue us even when we have fallen into temptation or we are fully surrounded by temptations lord deliver us and this uh, this peter who had slept and denied jesus christ knows this very well when he was reinstated by jesus christ and 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 years later he wrote this first peter chapter 5 verse 8 that satan your enemy is like a roaring lion ready to tear anyone first peter chapter 5 verse 8 says you know young men in the same way i'm sorry it's a uh, second peter He says, uh, therefore, be careful, be self self control, so that you can pray. Your enemy, devil, is tall,s like roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Be self controlled and alert. First Peter chapter five verse eight. Peter who slept denied he knows very well then is he trying to face the lion no Lord Jesus Christ is here he's teaching he's, he's, he's praying to God he's teaching us to pray to God that he will deliver us from this lion and 1st Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 Paul writes that when we are tempted God will make the way for us to escape to run away and we know the wonderful example of Joseph and Potiphar Potiphar's wife when she tempted Joseph and uh, Joseph was surrounded by this uh, full uh, uh, environment of temptation and there the word of God came into his mind and then he was reminded how can I sin against my God and then he ran away he ran away God made a path for him to run away the word of God came into his mind and he ran away this this is called Rema why because he was filled with logos he knew the word of God he knew his God very well and therefore from that word of God that particular moment 
a particular verse came to his mind and then he said how can I sin against my God therefore it is so important for our, all of us to be filled with his word to have the scriptures hidden in our hearts so that in times Holy Spirit will take out the scriptures and remind us when we are fallen into temptation and make way for us to run away because Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 says we are in a in a, in a war war is on we have to be alert we have to be vigil and keep watching and praying now togetherly we shall confirm and proclaim our faith by saying the nice and great we believe in one god the father the almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and become man, for our sake, and he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's offer our thanksgiving prayer to God and especially we shall remember those who are uh, celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries. First, we shall read Psalm 34, 1 to 3. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forevermore. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life through which we are able to pay our hearty thanks to you regarding birthdays and wedding anniversary. This time we pray for the people and the person, those are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversary throughout this week. Heavenly Father, bless them abundantly so that they may be able to bring praise and glory to you regularly along with uh, the family member and the church. Bless them abundantly by accepting their hearty thanks regarding birthdays and wedding anniversary in jesus name we submit our supplications to you amen
Offertory prayer. God of the universe, thank you that your promises are sure. You are faithful. We can rely on you. Your word says that we will find joy in offering our time, talents, and money to meet the needs of others. Help us to give freely, sacrificially, and cheerfully towards the work of your kingdom. May you cause the seeds that we sow to grow into well water, fruitful trees of life. Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face shine upon us. Turn your face towards us and give us peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. From, for the kingdom, the power and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Closing prayer. Father, Heavenly Father, thank you for leading each one of us uh, through this uh, worship through this Sunday service. Father, life gets busy and at times we lose track of the most important thing and that is worshiping you. Forgive us for putting our schedules before you. Give us the grace to continue fellowshipping with other Christians for the glory of your name. Thank you for ministering to our hearts. Let worship be a lifestyle to everyone that is gathered here and not just something we do when we come to this place. Heavenly Father, thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, we believe and pray. Amen.
The peace of God Almighty, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
This man 